Section 12 of Aesop's Fables, A New Revised Version The Hunter and the Wolf A greedy hunter one day shot a fine deer, and ere he could dress it, a pretty fawn came that way, and an arrow brought it to the ground. A boar now chanced to be passing, and the hunter wounded it so that it lay upon the ground as if dead. Not satisfied with this game, he must needs pursue a partridge that came fluttering near, and while he was doing so the wounded boar regained enough strength to spring upon him and kill him. A wolf came that way, and seeing the four dead bodies, said, Here is food for a month, but I will save the best and be content to-day with the bowstring. But when he seized the string, it loosened the fixed arrow which shot him through the heart. The greedy man and the miser cannot enjoy their gains. THE ASTRONOMER An astronomer used to walk out every night to gaze upon the stars. It happened one night that, with his whole thoughts wrapped up in the skies, he fell into a well. One who heard his cries ran up to him and said, While you are trying to pry into the mysteries of heaven, you overlook the common objects under your feet. We should never look so high as to miss seeing the things that are around us. THE BULL AND THE FROGS Two bulls lived in the same herd, and each aspiring to be the leader and master, they finally engaged in a fierce battle. An old frog who sat on the bank of a stream nearby began to groan and to quake with fear. A thoughtless young frog said to the old one, why need you be afraid? What is it to you that the bulls fight for supremacy? Do you not see, said the old frog, that one must defeat the other, and that the defeated bull, being driven from the field, will be forced to stay in the marshes, and will thus trample us to death? The poor and weak are often made to suffer for the follies of the great. THE THIEF AND HIS MOTHER a schoolboy stole a horn-book from one of his schoolfellows and brought it home to his mother. Instead of chastising him, she rather encouraged him in the deed. In course of time the boy, now grown into a man, began to steal things of greater value, until at last, being caught in the very act, he was brought to the judge and sentenced to be hung. As he was being led to the scaffold, the mother bowed herself to the ground with grief. A neighbor, seeing her thus, said to her, It is too late for you to moan and sob now. If you had been as much grieved when he committed his first theft, you would have corrected him in time, and thus have saved yourself this sorrowful day. Nip Evil in the Bud The Man and His Two Wives In days when a man was allowed more wives than one, a middle-aged bachelor, who could be called neither young nor old, and whose hair was only just beginning to turn gray, must needs fall in love with two women at once and marry them both. The one was young and blooming, and wished her husband to appear as useful as herself. The other was somewhat more advanced in age, and as anxious that her husband should appear a suitable match for her. So, while the young one seized every opportunity of pulling out the good man's gray hairs, the old one was as industrious in plucking out every black hair she could find, till he found that between the one and the other he had not a hair left. He that submits his principles to the influence and caprices of opposite parties will end in having no principles at all. THE HEIFER, THE GOAT, THE SHEEP, AND THE LION A heifer, a goat, a sheep, and a lion formed a partnership, and agreed to divide their earnings. The goat, having snared a stag, they sent for the lion to divide it for them. The lion said, I will make four parts. The first shall be mine as judge, the second because I am strongest, the third because I am bravest, and the fourth... I will kill anyone who dares touch it. 
he who steals a part will steal the whole. The Camel and the Travelers Two travelers on a desert saw a camel in the distance, and were greatly frightened at his huge appearance, thinking it to be some huge monster. While they hid behind some low shrubs, the animal came nearer, and they discovered it was only a harmless camel which had excited their fears. Distance exaggerates dangers. The Swan and the Goose a certain rich man bought in the market a goose and a swan. He fed the one for his table, and kept the other for the sake of its song. When the time came for killing the goose, the cook went to take him at night, when it was dark, and he was not able to distinguish one bird from the other, and he caught the swan instead of the goose. The swan, threatened with death, burst forth into song, and thus made himself known by his voice, and preserved his life by his melody. Sweet words may deliver us from peril, when harsh words would fail. THE DOLPHINS AND THE SPRAT The dolphins and the whales were at war with one another, and the sprat stepped in and endeavored to separate them. But one of the dolphins cried out, we would rather perish in the contest than be reconciled by you. THE SHEPHERD AND THE SEA A shepherd moved down his flock to feed near the shore, and beholding the sea lying in a smooth calm, he was seized with a strong desire to sail over it. So he sold all his sheep and bought a cargo of dates, and loaded a vessel and set sail. He had not gone far when a storm arose, his ship was wrecked, and his dates and everything lost, and he himself with difficulty escaped to land. Not long after, when the sea was again calm, and one of his friends came up to him and was admiring its repose, he said, Have a care, my good fellow, of that smooth surface. It is only looking out for your dates. THE BEES, THE DRONES, AND THE WASP some bees had built their comb in the hollow trunk of an oak. The drones asserted that it was their doing and belonged to them. The cause was brought into court before Judge Wasp. Knowing something of the parties, he thus addressed them. The plaintiffs and defendants are so much alike in shape and color as to render the ownership a doubtful matter. Let each party take a hive to itself, and build up a new comb that from the shape of the cells and the taste of the honey, the lawful proprietors of the property in dispute may appear. The bees readily assented to the wasp's plan. The drones declined it, whereupon the wasp gave judgment. It is clear now who made the comb, and who cannot make it. The court adjudges the honey to the bees. Professions are best tested by deeds. THE WOLF, THE GOAT, AND THE KID As an old goat was going forth to pasture, she carefully latched her door, and bid her kid not to open it to anyone who could not give this password. Beware of the wolf and all his race. A wolf happened to be passing and overheard what the old goat said. When she was gone, he went to the door and, knocking, said, Beware of the wolf and all his race. But the kid, peering through a crack, said, Show me a white paw, and I will open the door. As the wolf could not do this, he had to depart, no better than he came. Two sureties are better than one. THE FOX AND THE HEDGEHOG A fox, while crossing over a river, was driven by the stream into a narrow gorge, and lay there for a long time, unable to get out, covered with myriads of horseflies that had fastened themselves upon him. A hedgehog, who was wandering in that direction, saw him, and, taking compassion on him, asked him if he should drive away the flies that were so tormenting him. But the fox begged him to do nothing of the sort. "'Why not?' asked the hedgehog. "'Because,' replied the fox, "'these flies that are upon me now are already full, and draw but little blood.' But should you remove them, a swarm of fresh and hungry ones will come, who will not leave a drop of blood in my body. 
When we throw off rulers or dependents who have already made the most of us, we do but for the most part lay ourselves open to others who will make us bleed yet more freely. THE BRAZIER AND HIS DOG A brazier had a little dog which was a great favorite of his master and his constant companion. While he hammered away at his medals, the dog slept, but when, on the other hand, he went to dinner and began to eat, the dog woke up and wagged his tail, as if he would ask for a share of his meal. His master one day pretended to be angry, and shaking his stick at him, said, "'You wretched little sluggard! What shall I do to you? While I am hammering on the anvil, you sleep on the mat, and when I begin to eat after my toil, you wake up and wag your tail for food. Do you not know that labor is the source of every blessing, and that none but those who work are entitled to eat? THE WILD ASS AND THE LION A wild ass and a lion entered into an alliance that they might capture the beasts of the forest with the greater ease. The lion agreed to assist the wild ass with strength, while the wild ass gave the lion the benefit of his greater speed. When they had taken as many beasts as their necessities required, the lion undertook to distribute the prey, and for this purpose he divided it into three shares. "'I will take the first share,' he said, "'because I am king, and the second share, as a partner with you in the chase, and the third share, believe me, will be a source of great evil to you, unless you willingly resign it to me, and set off as fast as you can. Might makes right. The Father and His Two Daughters A man had two daughters, the one married to a gardener, and the other to a tile-maker. After a while he went to the daughter who was married to the gardener, and inquired how she was and how all things went with her. She said, all things are prospering with me, and I have only one wish, that there may be a heavy fall of rain, in order that the plants may be well watered. Not long after he went to the daughter who had married the tile-maker, and likewise inquired of her how she fared. She replied, I want for nothing, and only have one wish, that the dry weather may continue, and the sun shine hot and bright, so that the bricks might be dried. He said to her, If your sister wishes for rain, and you for dry weather, with which of the two am I to join my wishes? THE FIR TREE AND THE BRAMBLE A fir tree said boastingly to the bramble, You are useful for nothing at all, while I am everywhere used for roofs and houses. The bramble made answer, You poor creature! If you would only call to mind the axes and saws which are about to hew you down, you would have reason to wish that you had grown up a bramble and not a fir tree. Better poverty without care than riches with. THE FARMER AND HIS SONS A farmer, being on the point of death, wished to ensure from his sons the same attention to his form as he himself had given it. He called them to his bedside and said, My sons, there is a great treasure hid in one of my vineyards. The sons, after his death, took their spades and mattocks and carefully dug over every portion of their land. They found no treasure, but the vines repaid their labor by an extraordinary and superabundant crop. THE CAT AND THE BIRDS A cat hearing that the birds in a certain aviary were ailing, dressed himself up as a physician, and, taking with him his cane and the instruments becoming his profession, went to the aviary, knocked at the door, and inquired of the inmates how they all did, saying that if they were ill, he would be happy to prescribe for them and cure them. They replied, We are all very well, and shall continue so, if you will only be good enough to go away and leave us as we are. THE STAG, THE WOLF, AND THE SHEEP A stag asked a sheep to lend him a measure of wheat, and said that the wolf would be his surety. The sheep, fearing some fraud was intended, excused herself, saying, 
The wolf is accustomed to seize what he wants and to run off, and you too can quickly outstrip me in your rapid flight. How then shall I be able to find you when the day of payment comes? Two blacks do not make one white. End of section 12. End of Aesop's Fables, a new revised version. This recording by Phil Chenever in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, July 2013.